Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to This Is A Work, a monthly wrestling podcast about the WWE's pay-per-view events. I'm David Hensley, owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and here's your host, David Two Dogs Hayes. Take it away, dogs. Uh, thank you, David Hensley, and welcome to Rock Hill's only premier WWE pay-per-view review podcast. This is a work. I am David Two Dogs Hayes. Alongside me, my co-host, Chris the Yard Barnes. And I think I'm going to come up... I approve none of that. <laughs> I'm coming up with a new name for you every every time we do this. Oh, this month, we're going to be reviewing the pay-per-view Extreme Rules. Now, for those that aren't in the know, this is a tip of the cap to... The old ECW federation that Vince bought out. And people still have a knack for extreme and hardcore wrestling. So we dedicated an entire pay-per-view to it. And we're going to get into that. Uh, But before we do, we should probably just talk about ourselves real quick. Like, our interest in wrestling. Absolutely. Well, man, you know, I've been watching wrestling ever since I was able to sit upright and change the channel. Switched it right over to the first channel. Started watching some Mid Atlantic, and I've always, I've just always been a fan. I used to keep stats, much like I'm going to be doing with this podcast. When I was a kid, nothing has changed. Basically, what I'm telling you is, I am still a five year old kid. So, what what about you, Barnes? (laughs) I became a wrestling fan by accident in the winter of '97. I was flipping channels. And I chanced upon wrestling, mm-hmm. and I watched it like on a channel uh, WWF actually I think first, and I, I flipped, and there was like like two channels away, and I found WCW, and I was like, huh. And so I think just by the fact that I found two of them at the same time, I just started watching and went from there. Well, let's get into it, man. You know what? First, let's talk about a little bit of wrestling news, and let's get you uh, up to date. First, let's start with Enzo Amore. So. Enzo has been saying from the get-go, there was an investigation on me. Uh, Nothing happened. Enzo had no idea that anything was going on. And I guess it begs the question, will he return to the WWE? Probably just down the line, they might let him come back. Mm Mm-hmm. There is precedent for that. Enzo was money. If they could, uh, (laughs) by all reports, apparently if they could just like put him in his own little hamster terrarium until it was time to let him out, (laughs) things would be perfect. Because uh, apparently problems only arose when he talked to anybody else. Right. (laughs) Look, we, we let Big Cass go just because <laughs> he, he was stinking up the joint. I, I personally think a guy like Big Cass was perfect in the role with Enzo because he's the kind of big guy who should be a support. Kind of the same way of uh, 911, who would just show up to choke Boy. slam somebody. <laughs> he would just show up as the muscle to hit somebody occasionally and then just stay outside as the big guy to protect somebody personally i would uh i, I wouldn't mind uh seeing enzo come back and maybe teaming up with baron corbin yeah seeing as seeing as well they're basically they just finished running the same angle kind of yeah. uh, with finn balor that big Cass uh was doing with daniel bryan just before <laughs> they let him go you know it, it is what it is i'd like to see enzo back Moving on, we've got the UFC news that yeah. ties in. Daniel Cormier got challenged by none other than the reigning, defending, undisputed Universal Champion, Barack Lesnar. At, now, uh, <laughs> that middle adjective was in quotes, right? <laughs> Yeah, defending. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's, he, apparently this is what he's using all that time. He's not showing up to have that title on the line for. Didn't he retire from this? <laughs> this was brought up into WWE storyline. Yeah. Uh, which we'll talk a little bit about that. Brock Lesnar challenging Cormier, which I think does us a world of good for uh, for for Vince and of, of course it's the good offices. business. If you watch the pay-per-view, when they start talking about Brock, you start hearing people booing. Brock Lesnar has a little bit of Hogan syndrome back in 96. No, he he's, they, they tried to make his comeback. Mm-hmm. Comes back, uh, beats Yokozuna, and you can literally hear people in the crowd booing because 
they've had Hogan shoved down their throats right. for so long, and they're tired of it. I think that's what's going on with Lesnar well, now. Yeah, and part of it is, is like Brock was fun, and then he got less fun because it became very clear that he's only going to show up on occasion. He's going to show up on occasion. He's going to throw four suplexes. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, hell, at least Hogan had five moves that he did. I mean, he, <laughs> he, had, he had three punches, a, a, you know, a big boot. He did the gator clap, dropped yep. the leg, and took it to the house. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Hogan. Yeah, it's weird. It's like all of the stuff that you said was very prescient. Talking about Enzo's possible reinstatement after mm-hmm. it, the heat dies down. Interesting, because over the weekend, guess who showed up as a living, breathing person on WWE's website again? And who would that be? What well, I do believe it's it's the former non-entity Hulk Hogan, <laughs> been reinstated into the Hall of Fame. I'm I'm happy about it. Yeah. Take your the morality out of it. The guy has done a lot for the business, and I'm not a fan of Hogan at all. Never have been, and I I I think it's just it's BS for him to uh, have been taken out in the first place. Yeah. Well, you've also got yeah, you've also got Jimmy Snuka yeah. that's in there, and P.S. Hayes. He's, he's a murderer. P.S. Hayes is in there. I'm not even going to talk to you about some of the things that he has said. He is to Mark ironic, Henry. He is ironically the reason uh, Lashley left the first time. You're kidding me. I did not know it's that. part of that. Let's get into this pay-per-view. Let's, uh, uh, well, you know what? We started off good, and I know you didn't get to see this. So we start off the uh, kickoff show with Sin Cara versus Almez. And I'm not a fan of Sin Cara. Call him the reason for Botchamania. Oh, no. He's like the patron saint of their show. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, right, really. <laughs> but I got to tell you, man, he's never looked better. Good. Uh, Almez Dynamite, fantastic match. This kid's got a lot of promise. I can't wait to see what else he does. Cool. I gave this uh, two and a half Meltzers. Uh, oh, yeah, my rating system is uh, based on uh, Dave Meltzer, uh, the guy that uh, started rating the wrestlers in Pro Wrestling Illustrated and started doing all the articles and blew kayfabe out of the water way back in the day. So two and a half Meltzers for this match. Uh, out of what? I'm just curious. Out of five. Okay, so it's on yeah. a five scale. Okay. Uh, I'll go through New Day versus Sanity briefly. Oh, I'm sad I missed that. Oh, it was fantastic. Oh. Uh, uh, New Day never looked better. Sanity, I love this stable. It's I gave it a three Meltzer rating. Easily one of the best matches of the night, even though the pay-per-view hasn't even started yet. Nice. Uh, who, who won? Oh, that was Sanity. Man, oh, okay. Man. Eric Young and his boys got put over and okay. uh, well-deserved because they look great. Good, um, good. But then we actually move on into the actual pay-per-view, and we start this off with the Deleter of Worlds okay. versus the right. B-Team. I will say this. As much as I'm not a huge fan of Matt Hardy's gimmick, he works well with Bray, and I, I can tell. It, there's a great chemistry there. Can't I take away it. from it. No, I, I dig it. The B team, I love because two reasons. One, I like I like Curtis Axel and uh, love it and Bo Dallas. They 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 do they work well together too. And uh, two, it's weird. I could tell they were supposed to be the heels in this match. The bad guys. They were supposed to doing really. They were doing classic heel tactics and you know separating and t- constant tags and. Not quite outright cheating, but like the refs not looking, you know. They did, a, they did, they did great work, and also as the, like I said, their chemistry is weird because like they were the heels in this match, but they were there were tape breaks when they, they were there was be like they would pump each other up, and they were like being like real friends to each other. It's like it's funny to watch. It's like it's the the and, build up to this thing is phenomenal with them that they, they were making fun of the deleter of worlds yeah they had Bo Dallas who is the brother of Bray Wyatt right uh, putting on the uh, beard and uh, <laughs> and the dreadlock wig <laughs> with some hat that he got from a convenience store and this little <laughs> this little lantern that he probably got off sharper image and <laughs> and then you got Curtis Axel. Dewey uh, with another with a wig that he probably got from Party City to be uh, uh, woken Matt Hardy, and the build up and the vignettes that they were doing hilarious. 
They kept breaking character, which just made it so much better. <laughs> and then they come out, and nobody expected these guys to no, go over. No. It was a true underdog story. And which, again, <laughs> is weird, because, I mean, it's it's weird that the, the bad guys in this match are the underdog. And that's actually something I'll touch on later. Because, mm-hmm. again, when, when they when they took it, when they, took, they, they won and they took the titles, like, they were celebrating. They weren't, like... Celebrating in a heel way, they weren't. They weren't like, "Haha, we beat you," and they didn't. You know, they didn't have any like post, post match, you know, attacks or anything like that. They mm. actually, they were on the outside, running around like kids, just genuinely pumped. They're it was clearly... very mankind wins yes. the world title. Yes. back it in was, the attitude. It was short era. of a victory lap, yeah. and I was watching that night when that happened. I, that was amazing to watch. Yeah. The lines I that I got wrote down here in my notes when they're interviewed afterwards. Yeah. Oh, the post show interview is it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. How do? Well, no, not even that. Just oh. after the match, Charlie Caruso is up there on the ramp. I ask him how did they feel, and Curtis Axel drops the pipe bomb. He's how do we feel? How do you think we feel? How does a rainbow feel? <laughs> Best thing I had heard that entire night. Yeah. Probably the best thing I did hear that night. Uh, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the B team are, it gets an A plus from me. I, I got to go three Meltzers on this. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm assuming like they're gonna ease towards being like faces because you can't you can't have a guy guys running around acting like that if they're supposed to be the bad guys because it's like they're not comedy heels like, yeah they're, they're when they're in well, the i think ring, they are now well yeah okay maybe now but it's like because they were they were all business in the ring right you know that might be them moving hardy and bray white to doing things on their own again I'm uh, it'd be nice because i i'm i'm really done with matt hardy i understand <laughs> that you know the broken slash woken Hardy thing is it's over and I, yeah. maybe it, because I don't watch Impact and I don't have access to Ring of Honor, uh, maybe I just don't get it. Really, the only thing I think that needs to change immediately about the B team is their theme because I don't like it. Why? It's generic. It's just generic butt rock. Ah, you it, know what? It's inspirational. All I hear, these battle scars, whatever. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> what, it does not fit the team's demeanor, at least as what I saw as of what I saw last night. It's you know what? We're, we're gonna get these guys to be a draw. We're gonna give them some more money, and we're gonna we're gonna up the entrance music a little bit. But for right now, I think it's great. I have the same problem with Seth Rollins' music. It's just like it feels weirdly out of place for him. Yeah, uh, although uh, I will say that the the crowd is into the music. Yeah, uh, and, just the uh, burn it down. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I just I like I tend to like the more unique theme songs. Theme songs are really up my alley in terms of, of things I really like about wrestling. I do, and too. I like the more unique ones. And you know, speaking of theme songs and everything, I am going to take this quick opportunity to uh, give a quick shout out to. Uh, Another podcast that has come up uh, just recently, some uh, some good friends of mine, podcast with Jason and Mike. Uh, it's it's a podcast about old school wrestling, not necessarily just old school wrestling, just uh, wrestling in general. They are fans of the old school and not necessarily the current product, but they're liable to talk about just about anything. We're they're about four episodes in right now. I got to say, I absolutely love the podcast. But anyway, I I wanted to put that out there real quick. So right after that, we go into uh, a segment with Kurt Angle, once again talking about our wrestling news uh, with uh, Brock Lesnar, uh, saying that, well, we saw him on UFC challenging their heavyweight champion, and uh, but he hasn't bothered to do this, that, and the other. And they made up some angle about how he had to cancel a match because Brock didn't want to show. They had to resurrect a, a classic angle where... Angle. Uh, <laughs> they had to resurrect an old... The classic angle of the champ hasn't defended in long enough, mm-hmm. and now we're going to strip him if he don't. Right. If he doesn't. If he don't. don't. If, if he don't. <laughs> the mention of the name Brock Lesnar... It's not as bad as the as the mention of Roman Reigns, but still, you just you hear this just all encompassing moan. Yeah, just it's not necessarily booze. It's just like 
the honeymoon's God. over. Yeah, it's uh, we, we're done with that. And honestly, I think the the boys backstage they hear it. Yeah. And they know, okay, oh, we got to do something about this. The time is here. Problem is, who are you going to legitimately give this belt to? Uh, as And that's where we... I guess based on who they've who they've put over, uh, I guess they'll game, bring Goldberg back. <laughs> Goldberg. <laughs> My God. Uh, well, I, I mean... mean uh, it's, it's funny. It's funny how... Brock's getting more of a pass about this than a few years back when The Rock, who came back to face Cena, was kind of putting in the same thing because he also had other outside interests. And it was like, but it was like, oh, via satellite, like Rock, The Rock brings it via satellite. And it was like, right. It was like, The Rock caught more flack. He, and it, yeah, and it's I, I fi- kind of remember that. And it's finally catching up to Brock, but it's, yeah. But it's like, The Rock caught more immediate flack. Like Cena made cracks at him over it too, mm-hmm. See, and, and that's he where wasn't even to... he wasn't even champion. It's like well, no, <laughs> at, the, at the time he was doing it, no, and, and that's the thing is, is, but the main question looms over us: Who do you put that belt on? Who is the man that can take that belt away from Brock Lesnar? The arguments come up: Could it be Strowman? Probably, maybe. I think I'm in a. I think the guys uh, working the angles are in agreement. Roman isn't quite ready for that yet. No, they might have. That finally trickled through somehow. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, personally, I'm of the opinion he's one of the few people, uh, Bra, uh, Braun Strowman, that doesn't need a belt. Uh, no. We haven't seen that type of character come through in a long time, and I think we've got it with Lesnar. He doesn't, but he's probably going to have it at some point because he's the Money in the Bank champ. Absolutely. And if he is, uh, that would be a very, uh, it would be very bad for his momentum in any way, shape, or form if he cashes in and doesn't get it. Unless there's like a monumental screw-over in some way. I don't see any possible storyline that they would want to work to elevate anybody where he would cash that in and not get it. Right, I mean, exactly. They tried that. They did it with uh, Baron Corbin. Which is mentioned, yeah. And, wow, that was... And it's and, only happened a handful of times where someone hasn't. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll get back to that later. Let's uh, let's move in to the... Uh, speaking of Baron Corbin, let's, uh, let's get into Baron Corbin... Versus Finn Balor. I like the match for what it was. I like the match. Uh, you know, uh, Finn is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Corbin is, uh, he's passable. Mm-hmm. My biggest question, the, the biggest note that I wrote down uh, yeah. for this match is, why? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Finn Balor goes over. Uh uh, handedly, and it was a it was a very it, middle it, match. It was uh, very much an, an earned victory. You know, they made it look. I mean, yeah, but it uh, made it made Corbin look tough, and it made Finn look uh, you know resourceful. This is my problem. Why do we need to make Baron Corbin the constable of Raw? Okay, I, since I can't, I don't normally. I'm not able to tune into Raw. What is this? Yeah, let me well, let me bring you up to speed here. Sure, sure. Baron Corbin is. Uh, not necessarily an active wrestler anymore. Right. He is he has been deemed by Stephanie McMahon to be the constable of Raw. So when she can Well if he be doesn't there, burst into every scene going, What's all this then? <laughs> I know I am right. sorely disappointed. What you saw him come down to the ring in is what he wears every single day. You couldn't get him any gear anymore. Of course, I mean to be fair, though, the only gear that he had to begin with was a cut-up T-shirt. And I've seen that on every indie circuit I've ever been to, or been a part of, for that matter. The The one thing that I will say about this match, that there was one point when Balor ends, uh, ends up on the outside of the apron. Mm-hmm. and He goes for that leap, right? He goes for that leap and Cor- gets... Yeah. Great Corbin cocked. Yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> my God, that was vicious. Probably the best thing I've ever seen. Oh Corbin yeah, no, do. you went down like a sack. It was of so brutal. I mean, half of that you got to give to Balor for just being able to sell like a champ. Yeah, no. Um, 
that's something else that I'm just going to keep steering our way back to because as far as I'm concerned, it's all about getting that belt off Lesnar. What about Finn Balor, the first Universal Champion? Um, oh, God. There's no way that, I mean, there's no way the least of all Brock would let it happen that cleanly. Baylor versus Corbin. Um, you know, it was, it was the match was fine. Uh, I gave it a 1.5 Meltzer. Um, you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. I don't see where it elevated anybody. I don't see what it would do for Finn, who's looking to make a universal run right now, but went up against a non-wrestler? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it affects uh, anything, anything down the road. It looked good for a one-off. Yeah, we could have put that on. We could have put that on Raw. Did he prove he was big enough? Yeah, and, and again, this storyline. Didn't we do this a month ago with Big Cass? Yes. And well, Big Cass <laughs> and he decided was fired after that. And he decided. And he decided Daniel Bryan, beater of worlds, was <laughs> not yeah. big enough. There's another one. Could the comeback kid Daniel Bryan? Take that universal I think title. He I, honestly, I think he should. I think huh. he's the best contender for a David and Goliath story. Literal. That one. would that would work out. That'd be a that'd yeah. be a nice angle to run. Absolutely. Well, let's be honest. This pay per view was only fair to Midland at best. So I'm gonna keep bringing that back. And we're getting to the Midland soon enough. Right. Yeah. And speaking of Midland, we have Carmella versus Asuka. Good match, yes. uh, and I say again to folks that are not into the new product, you gotta watch this with casual fans that are roughly familiar with people. I have kind of oh, coached up. They hate that screeching Staten Island Harvey. Boy, do they ever! <laughs> And, and I have I, I've coached up a lot of our friends and getting them to watch the pay per views essentially by the same way I made my friends. I just I pick them up and shake them until they say they're going to watch wrestling with me. And then they have thoughts about it. And the females hate Carmella, which tells me she's doing a fantastic job. So we put James Elworth in a shark's cage, uh, which you know... Uh, I'm not going to say this often, but Corey Graves, or some, one of the commentators, raised a good point. Why did no one frisk him before they put him in the cage? <laughs> Well, you know, if it's one thing, if history has taught me anything about wrestling in cages, yes, I have yet to see a wrestling match where someone said, well, I guess I'm in here for the duration. And, <laughs> and they sit down politely and, and they, they wait. Sit down and they just they start, uh, they, they start hanging out with their iPhone and, and uh, no, <laughs> never happened. Never happened in the history of wrestling has anybody just gone in the cage and stayed there. <laughs> Although they did a very unique twist with this one. Yeah. Uh, Ellsworth, as we all know, is a lock picking expert. And uh, <laughs> so he picks this lock, but. He... Well, uh, but before that, he drops not one, but two different foreign objects into the ring for Carmella. It was the, the a chain. Mm -hmm. And the spray that had previously been used to blind Oscar in a match. Right, I forgot about that. <laughs> and yeah, and they just kept getting taken away. Well, yeah. until until they didn't. Yes, that part I absolutely love. Just yeah. such good hill work. Oh yeah, uh, it, it, it's Looney Tunes and it's fun. <laughs> oh yeah, <It's, laughs> I wanted him to keep dropping more things. <laughs> no, it's the throw an anvil out there yeah, eventually like... and. <laughs> There's a piano, and <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, he does it in the middle of the match after they've 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 been wrestling for a little while. He's just he just blatantly starts picking the lock to the cage. Yeah, and he opens it up. Problem is, he gets his foot quote unquote caught. Pant leg. Yeah, I think it's yeah. It's yeah. Like, so so he's he's hanging upside down, and they have they lo they immediately stop to lower the cage to let him out. A, a little unprecedented. Asuka, <laughs> seeing her chance, because she knocked out Carmella at ringside, jumps in. It's like, I need this chance. And they're ruining it. Takes out the ring crew trying to get him down and then proceeds to pinata him. Took out most of the ring crew because yeah. the one the third guy one, the third just one. said, no. Yeah, the smart one. Bounced. And then you think, wow, yeah, yeah Ellsworth's getting the what for now. But no. 
Here comes Carmella, slams her head. Yeah, the best part was <laughs> Carmella took her time, stood there, and measured her up, and then grabs her and bang. Yeah, just <laughs> into the cage. Down she goes. One, two, three. <laughs> well done. Yes, I, all around, very good match. I, I love. I do hate that Oscar has now done the favor three. Times I in think, three pay per views, but I think that's coming back for probably next month. I, it's I gonna feel, have to, I feel, right? Yeah, it would have to, because it's like you know she hadn't been beat up until WrestleMania, and mm-hmm. now three in a row, something's got to be coming for. Her, otherwise, it's just gonna kill her momentum. Oh show. yeah, <laughs> I mean, is it because otherwise we're just uh, plus plus Carmella needs come up, and otherwise this gets old. Yeah, and while I absolutely. Love. I I like it. the the girls that that watch this with us. The ladies uh, get because so upset about because it because Car- Carmella is the textbook evil, you know, cowardly heel. Yeah, and she they her and James Elworth play it to the hill, and it's great to the point where it's like finally when it's time for her to get what she deserves. Yeah, uh, from a storytelling venue that standpoint, that's what you need. And I think what's and it's where, gotta, where do you think this is going for SummerSlam? I don't know. I mean, something would have to happen where it they try their aunt like they they. So we've locked Ellsworth. I'm betting. Up I'm betting Ellsworth is just they try to keep Ellsworth out some way or yeah. another because the last two times it's like he's been the key, or in every and then like in in like in the SmackDown recaps they showed he's been the key mm-hmm. to messing with Asuka. Do you think who, they're who, gonna uh, go to the cell? I'm gonna say no. I, I okay. think they might go for another stipulation where they try and keep Ellsworth out. Mm-hmm. He gets in, and this time, finally, it backfires in a way where it screws over Carmella. I think this is going to have to be something that's just going to even the odds. Yes. Uh, I, I think what we're going to have to see here is, seeing as we're using uh, illegal, we can't say foreign anymore, but we can use international objects <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> Pulling up a WCW class. You like that? Yeah. That's, <laughs> Don't want to offend anybody. We're using international objects to to try to win our match. So maybe this time, this is going to be uh, James Elworth is banned from ringside. Uh, if he comes down, they'll make the step. If he comes down, if he interferes in any way, uh, then Carmella will be stripped of the title. Um, yeah. Maybe. And then they're going to say this is going to be a falls count anywhere, or this is going to be a no holds barred match where you can bring whatever you want. I would I would say like the way the way that they would probably plan it, if you do bar him in that way, it would be falls count anywhere, so he could still show up. And then finally it would that screw, would be fun. It would and then finally it would screw them screw them over. And you know we haven't seen a falls count anywhere in a long no, time. No, kind of miss. I was looking at some old footage the other day. Of uh, them wrestling back into the dressing room, yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I'm interested to see. You know, the women's revolution that they've come a long way, and the matches are so much better. I'd be interested to see how they did in a match like that. Yeah, that would be really interesting. I would like that. Yeah, I like this match. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching it. I gave this two and a half Meltzers. Okay. See, I, I would think it'd have to because. Aside from the tag team title change, a lot of the titles taking place, most of the title holders are mm-hmm. heels, and they're moving into SummerSlam. I think things are switching up at SummerSlam. They would. Uh, they it's would it's going to have to. And yeah. on, I'll, I'll be quite honest. Like This match is getting so heated. Yeah. Again, and this is where I play armchair booker, I would have moved this match up the card I think uh, so. a little oh. bit. Ahead of certain things for sure. Uh, speaking <laughs> and speaking of things that should have been slid down the card, um, we have Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura, or as I like to call it, Jeff Hardy and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad pay per view <laughs> match. Oh, this! What was... a terrible night for Jeff Hardy's balls. Um, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I you just. Know. If you, if you wouldn't keep closing your eyes so people can see your cool face paint, you might just, have saw that coming. Uh, I di- first of all, I did not expect the. I, okay, I did expect Shinsuke to because for some reason his favorite <laughs> thing to do now is just uppercut people in the balls. I did not expect that to be a pre-match thing, and then he immediately hits his finisher and wins. 
All right, so immediate title change. Yeah. Shinsuke's got the title, and then he's celebrating, and then... Well, before we get into that, okay, okay. you know, in watching this, the last time yes. that Jeff Hardy lost a match that quickly was in Impact Wrestling. Well, yeah, but that was kind of different circumstances. He was high out of his mind. We certainly hope so. (laughs) He was high out of his mind, and Sting got the word to just end this now. Yeah. As a, am I? I can't be the only one that didn't that thought of that when that happened. No, but he was lucid because he because he was he was playing his part, and when the ref got him up, he was like, "Yeah, start the match." As like he was telling him, he was telling yeah. him, like, "Yeah, start, yeah, fine, start the match," and then it ended. And that, I, <laughs> so it is, but it, but so that happened. One, two, three. We have a new United States champion and in Shinsuke it's... Nakamura, and what happened? And you're, you're you're getting used to that happening so fast, and then. I hear voices. (laughs) And out comes Randy Orton out of nowhere. Yeah, out of (laughs) nowhere, he says. Walking to the ring, despite the fact not being scheduled to be there in his ring gear, which is always a pattern that bugs me. Yeah, um, me too. It's like, I know you can walk out in, in regular civics, <laughs> and especially to do what you yeah. actually did. Not Randy Orton. He doesn't own pants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the... Uh... Cause he I, spends he, his money on tattoos. He walks, there, he, walks, <laughs> he walks out there in his ring gear to, to Shinsuke, who smartly gets out of the ring, stands on the announcer's table to look at him as they have a stare down back and forth. And then when it was taking so long, I knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Because I saw Jeff Hardy trying to get up in the background, and then Randy turns his head. And yeah. I don't, I don't know if this was just to send the message that he's going to come after him ruthlessly, but he just takes Jeff Hardy, opens his legs, and stomps his balls. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you know what, I'm okay with this, because do we really want Jeff Hardy breeding anyway? I, uh, just, as much as I'm not a fan of Jeff Hardy, I just like... This is bad night for him. <laughs> why does I, I just wanted him to start yelling? This, why does this keep happening? This is, was it? Why are you guys booking it this way? <laughs> you have a there's I'm a million sorry. things he could just, do just to have, me. Just him start finding the nearest camera. I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> uh, but honestly, uh, I I don't think it means he's going after Hardy. I think he was sending a message to Shinsuke because. <laughs> He was like, I'm going to be as mean as you are and come after you or something. And Shinsuke, after he did it, he looks at Hardy and he gets worried. He's like, he's, I'm, he looks genuinely sorry for Hardy. <laughs> now, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit because yeah. uh, as we are recording this, it is a Thursday night. And I and, did not watch SmackDown. so. <laughs> and I did. And let me tell you, sorry, spoilers coming, guys. <laughs> yeah. Go for um, it. Randy Orton comes out. Grabs Jeff Hardy again, beats him. Oh up, my God! And then proceeds to stick his finger into that opening he has in his ear. Oh, the gauge. The like, gauge thing, and starts to pull. Oh on it. no! <laughs> yes. Okay, I take Brutal. it back. I take it back. He's targeting Hardy and doesn't like him for what. Yeah, it's. it's it's a hardy so, party. So so brutal. Uh, wow. Okay. It's the first, and you know, I respect Randy Orton. I think he's a, a hell of a talent. Yes. As far as as watching him and the the Viper character, whatever thing, right. uh, doesn't do a lot for me. Me neither. I just it's just kind of bland, honestly. A Tuesday night, I was riveted. I, I was like, wow, that's that is the meanest thing I have seen anybody do in wrestling in a long time. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't even I don't even think you should explain it. I just <laughs> you yeah. just keep doing it. <laughs> so next and, time I and, want you to I want you to grab hold of his eyelids and I just <laughs> and then I just want you to turn them inside out and just <laughs> Like, Jeff Hardy should just keep demanding why he does it, and there's just no answer. <laughs> None. Just like a Terminator coming after him. I'd watch that angle. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hopefully we are watching that angle. I know. I can't do anything for this because there was no match. No, no, uh, no. It was just a transference of the belt. It was like, here, was, give right. Shinsuke the title, and uh, let's have Randy start his feud with Jeff, and the 
angry as possible. Yeah, I, I award no Meltzers, and may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, I, well, I, it could go somewhere interesting. And I think the point was, like, here, give Shinsuke a title to run with. Yeah, uh, because I honestly, uh, I, I think the title at that point is just incidental, especially if you're going to... If you're gonna rip his <laughs> ear gauge out, I well, mean, no, my I think God. No, I think the reason Jeff let that happen is you can stretch those and they will go back. Yeah, so yeah. it's like I think he just like yeah, pull it and then you know, it'll look really devastating. Yeah, it, it creeped me out. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like well, you've already made an extra hole loop in your in your ear. <laughs> yeah, I mean. We're so, only going so downhill. You from start here, messing so. with that, and it just just ups the cr- cringe. <laughs> it just brings new meaning to the song. Do your ears hang low? <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zero Meltzers for this match. Honestly, you should just put like a not applicable. <laughs> I, I wanted to, but just the way this whole card was stacked, I felt like I had to put a zero there so I could bring down the average <laughs> of the of the overall we're, rating. We're getting there. <laughs> and again, something else that should have been higher uh, on the card, Braun Strowman versus... Kevin, by God, Owens, and um, so yeah, this is this is going to be an interesting match to talk about because I have complicated feelings about how this match went. I, I, Kevin Owens, we start this whole thing out, and Kevin is being awesome like he always is. Yeah, chicken shit, he'll running away. Well, I uh, mean, and the thing about that is, okay, the problem I have with this is like they they replayed the run up to this, and for the most part, it was. Braun Strowman basically going, I want you to fight me. And mm-hmm. Kevin goes, no. Mm-hmm. And the entire thing is, Braun Strowman is the technical good guy in this situation. What I don't get, the whole run-up to this is, Owens not wanting a match, Strowman wanting a match, so Strowman terrorizes him until he gets a match. That's not typically how those roles are supposed to work. But you know. terrorizing him, and of course the Vince McMahon staple slash favorite person in a toilet in a latrine in porta potty getting shoved over. Right. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing, and this is how they're building us, and this is another reason I get to play armchair again. Right. This is another reason that uh, I think that Strowman would be great for that Universal Title because the one thing that we always say about Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar does. What Brock Lesnar wants to right. do. Same thing with Strowman. Strowman is doing what Strowman wants to do. But anyway, sorry. I'm, no, I'm no, on you're point. fine. You're fine. No, that is on point. And it's just I think that's the problem here. Is honestly watching this, like I was like Kevin Owens is reacting not in an evil way here. He's reacting normally <laughs> when faced with a guy like that who goes I'm going to fight you yeah. it's like no <laughs> no and it's like he doesn't want to and he's he basically got brutalized into being in the match he got brutalized mm-hmm. during the match yeah he finally he finally does fight back because it's like Kevin Owens can't fight he's like he but he's like he doesn't want to fight Braun Strowman yeah. and it's like and they highlight the fact in previous matches Strowman went after him he didn't want <laughs> He wasn't looking for this fight. Strowman was. Right. The guy the, the guy who's supposed to be the, the quote unquote good guy in this situation. Yeah. And so like I thought it was perfectly reasonable for Kevin Owens to handcuff him <laughs> to the rope, go kiss my ass and try and get out of the ring. And then but he didn't go fast enough, of course. Yeah. And Strowman catches up to him and an impressive and very impressive display leaps to the top of that cage. You can say whatever you I stopped, want to about Strowman. I stopped that, and said, whoa. <laughs> he is a freak of nature. Yeah. I mean, the things a man <laughs> that he does, a man of that size, yeah. should not be able to do. <laughs> As, and that's an equally impressive in a match with Owens, who is in like the Bam Bam category of agility. Absolutely. The, both of those men doing what they did in that match, amazing. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the spot where... Good guy Braun Strowman oh, yeah. has Kevin Owens on Let top of the, on, on on top of the cage, and he choke slams him out of the cage onto the announce table, which was absolutely amazing. And it looked I great. It was give, devastating. I will give Kevin Owens all the credit in the world because yes. uh, I have heard through the dirt sheets that he is terrified of heights. He is. Yes, and and he still did that. My one 
minor issue. I really wish we would not have seen that collapsible air mattress well, underneath the... Oh, of course. Uh, the WWE can't help it with their camera angles, so they show you the, the dumbest, the dumbest thing, and then might even replay it. Yeah, several times. Um, so, you know, Kevin Owens, quote-unquote, wins. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, by getting flung out by Strowman. Uh, he, who, they then immediately, it was like, he, he's like, he's laying on the ground. They have medical people come out to get him, take him to the back. Cause you know, he went through a table after being choked slammed by Strowman. Right. Strowman, uh, who did not win, but he's what, who the people love stands at the back and laughs yeah. and taunts him <laughs> before walking to the back triumphantly. But see, this is an and Austin then, scenario. Yeah. But... But no, it's not because Austin in those scenarios was fighting back against the tyrannical Mr. McMahon. Well, in those scenarios when he was doing it to other people, they were sent or they were coming after him to try and end him. But you know, it didn't start out that way. It no. was always Vince McMahon before he was Mr. McMahon. Right. Uh, he came in and he was like, well, listen, uh, as the IC champion or whatever title he had that week, uh, he's like, uh, you're going to have to compete. And uh, he, he was like, well, I'm mad. I don't want to compete. He said, well, look, you're, listen, you, you're going to have to. Like, and for the safety, it was like, we're going to, or we're going to keep you away for the sa- for your own safety, for the safety of the wrestlers. We can't have you going out into the crowd. We can't have you doing this. This is all about safety. This is for the greater good. And uh, Austin would always say, look, Austin does what Austin wants to do. Again, sound familiar? It's uh, but it's really not the same scenario. And like the it's, powers, it's slightly. But the different. powers that be are on Strowman's side. That's okay. <laughs> no, I it just it just bothers me. That's it. A, the storytelling here bothers me. Nah, it's I I no. I and I'm willing to let a lot of this go too because. Yeah. <laughs> And it may be, but I'm willing to let so much of it go is because, well, going back to the pay-per-view on whole was just so yeah. Bad. No, I'm and saying I'm saying in its own little vacuum of space, it's it's a it's a good match and it's great and it's like the story they told, mm-hmm. as much as I don't like it, went without a hitch. Right. But I don't like the story they told <laughs> because every bit of it screams to me. Kevin Owens was the underdog in this match despite being the supposed heel. Right. And the good guy won by dismantling the bad guy who really never seemed to stand a chance at all, barely. But see, we don't want... That. Look, I, I know what I, Strowman is. Strowman's the monster. He's the, he's, he's the monster of the people, basically. Mm-hmm. And I get that. But it's... The storytelling here is convoluted. <laughs> well, it's all well, it's, well, this is wrestling. Maybe. Here it's, especially, it's, here especially, it's convoluted. <clears throat> now, well, hey, hang on, here especially, I have seen. I know. Uh, I have seen uh, an, an angle that is only referred to as the Katie Vick angle. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but at least the story there was terrible, but straightforward. Yeah. Was it? Yes. Because, I mean, did it we was ter- really need that? I no. Mean- <laughs> but it was terrible and straightforward in the sense that it was clearly defined who was... like, And in, the, and in that situation, mm-hmm. Kane the monster was the good guy. Right. He was vic- he, But he was victimized, in a way, by Triple H, the heel at the time. I would that argue was- he victimized Katie Vick. <laughs> Triple H deserved everything coming his way, even though he didn't get it. You're right. No, you're absolutely right. Owens, Owen was, <laughs> oh, Kevin Owens was like, I don't want to wrestle you. Yeah. And Strowman couldn't take no for an answer in an, in an era when no should mean no. <laughs> Do you think, you know what, I'm not even going to Kevin Owens has wrestled with his consent. Kevin Owens has wrestled without his consent. Time's <laughs> up. It's... <laughs> God, so Kevin Owens no. tweets a, me t- a hashtag me too. <laughs> Did Enzo Amore book this match? <laughs> no. That's my contribution for the night, folks. Thank no. you. <laughs> no, because he would have been out there with a microphone the whole time shouting over the match. 
So next up, we've got another uh, uh, vignette with uh, the B team while Roman Reigns is preparing for and his And again, match. this is why I don't think they can stay heel. They run up to Roman Reigns and they're like, if we can do it, you yeah. can do it too. <laughs> you got to believe in yourself. Be uh? part of the B team. Uh? Yeah. Uh? Yeah. Uh? Yeah. Uh? Uh-huh. <laughs> And just fantastic. And uh, Roman did his part, which is nothing. Actually, and this is the one time when he actively enhanced it exactly. by, by staying the deadpan mouth breather that he is sometimes. <laughs> exactly. And that's what made this even better. I just figured it out. Roman Reigns is is a reincarnated version of... Of Lance Storm that cannot wrestle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Actually, the only way this could have been enhanced further is if Roman Reigns hadn't been there, but a cardboard cutout of him had been. <laughs> I know it's six of one, half dozen of the other, but. Said, yeah. <laughs> so after that vignette, we go on to the Bludgeon Brothers versus Team Hell No, Sans Kane. Well, and that would be because earlier in the night, um, we had a good old fa- something I hadn't seen in a while in WWE, a, b- a locker room attack, a backstage attack. Yeah. Where the Bludgeon Brothers decided, you know what, we're just going to beat the crap out of them right now. Yeah. <laughs> Which ended with Kane's leg getting slammed in the door. Right. With the hammer. Could have. I felt like we could have done something else to uh, push that home a little bit. Maybe. Uh, and, but Daniel Bryan was very impressive, holding his own for as long as he could, and then Kane did make it to the ring. And it went on for a little longer, but then again, it, but it just ended with them being overwhelmed because they were already hurt. Right. Um, you know, and the Bludgeon uh, Brothers retaining. Yeah, and look, I like the Bludgeon Brothers. I, th- I think the gimmick is good. What? Where? Where are we going here? What? What? what what's? What's our end game? It's uh, they're they're not that over, but they keep winning. Uh, I they're. Kind of like a watered-down version of Demolition back in the eighties. Um, yeah, I can I can see that. It's uh, it's it's I like the guys, but it's it's not a terribly you know interesting gimmick. Um, yeah, you can put the scary mask on and whatnot. The same thing Demolition did. Uh, but and the bondage gear and the bondage gear. <laughs> But yeah, that's where it is. I personally say I say put the Wyatt family back together. Um, mm. yeah. I don't I don't know if I necessarily want that, but I, I say give it a little more time, see if they can get it to go somewhere, and then then maybe fold them back in. Yeah, I don't know, man. Because yeah, because I mean, because then you could you could play it off as uh, well. They went off on their own. They were just but they were lost without Brady's leadership. So. Right now they're back. Yeah, I suppose. I I don't know. We've given them quite a long. They've been out of uh, the Wyatt family for a couple of years now, right? Has it hadn't been that long. I don't know. I, I, you know I, the timeline is hazy to me at this point. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Team Hell No goes over which. No, they didn't. They didn't. They. Oh no! I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah, Bludgeon Brothers. That's what I meant to say. They go over. And which starts the arguing for Team Hell No again. Well, yeah. Uh, I, I'm guessing that, I mean, just to... Because, I mean, it, they were great when they were the Magnificent Bickerson, so... Yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, I think, I I would hope that's going to lead to more anger management therapy. And angry hugs. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Uh... <laughs> Those hugs were best when they were forced, at least. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was that, that was that was good times back then. Yeah, uh, that's what I that's when I say when I love stupid stuff, especially mm-hmm. when it works. Yes. I love I love that kind of stuff because because of everybody involved and their talent. They and the crowd and the crowd going with it. It just caught like wildfire, and it's oh, just yeah. it's the dumbest thing. Why is this working? I don't mm-hmm. care. It's amazing. <laughs> But I need to buy a ticket for the next exactly. pay per view because this is awesome. <laughs> I gave this match uh, two and three quarter melters. I did not. Oh my not... god! There's quarters. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's lots of quarters. Is there? I okay. I'm, I'm interested <laughs> to see how deep this fraction system goes. A, a, a quarter melter is better than no melter at all. That's that's 
<laughs> That's what my grandfather used to tell me. Uh, Two and three quarter Meltzers, man. Uh, I, I didn't hate the match. I thought it was right. a really right. good match, especially with Brian doing his underdog thing. Rowan and Harper can go. Uh, yeah, I, I'll yeah. never take any. They uh, are they are ridiculously talented and and move so well for big guys. Yeah, and I like they've to got s- they've got the chops basically. I'd like to see some more. Um, I'd like to see Luke Harper get a little more body weight on him. Mm-hmm. He he. He feels very big cast to me, uh, just just tall. That's like his claim to fame is he's tall with a beard. Grow it out enough where he can just wear it like a, like a suit and just walk to the <laughs> ring like that. Because a beard suit would be better than the very next match that we had. <laughs> we have... Oh, God. Our savior, the one that Vince and... Triple H have decided this is going to be the one to beat the one. Bobby Lashley. Miss, Mr. No Eyebrows himself uh. versus <laughs> the Roman Empire Roman Reigns. My God. I did not know until watching this particular match um, that Roman Reigns' armor now has him in silhouette doing the Superman punch. I don't know how long it's been yeah, like that for a You while. haven't noticed that? No, and now it just annoys me more. Yeah. Oh, more. yeah, and it's... that's insane. Uh, Oh, it will, because it's been that way for a hard minute now. You know how we referenced the five moves of Doom earlier? Yeah. Roman has less than half of that. <laughs> He's got two. It's so... I mean... Look, I, look, I understand all my... <laughs> All my rain disciples out there that are listening, uh, look, I, I understand the man can work. I get it. He wouldn't be at that level if he couldn't. He went up through NXT. Blah, 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 Here's blah. the thing. Technically, uh, that, that match was all right. <sighs> it was. It was all right. It was all right. I'm not saying it was any great shakes. It was all right. Yeah. Largely due to Lashley. Lashley had more technical. Really? Well, I think he had more technical prowess than uh, Roman. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, but saying all that, still my favorite part of the night was uh, Roman Reigns unceremoniously dumping him hard in the ring and Lashley getting... Uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I think it was... Dumped him out of the ring. Was Did Lashley dump Roman or it was Roman? Roman dumped Okay, Ashley. so yeah, it was revenge from earlier. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> Lashley dumps him hard early on in the match and then later on Roman just flings him out of the ring Lashley lands on his side, like... Uh, it was, it was enough, the worst landing I don't know if had, I've ever seen. Yeah, there was no preparation for that landing. I hope he had enough body fat on him to absorb any of that. He he, he just landed on that tree trunk of an arm that he's got. Yeah. And just stayed there. I was like, oh, God, that's a talking to it from somebody. Uh, you know, it, I don't know, man. I, I don't have... Why would you put this that high up the card? You know, I don't know. People are not getting behind those, Lashley. Those two should not be leading each other through a match. It's no, very clear. No. It's very clear by what they were doing. And right on down to that terrible half spear finish. That was the was that, super soft spear. That, that's the thing. I, that, look, okay. All right. Now I'm angry. I just, I, I, I'm going to go on a tangent a minute about the, the goddamn spears. Okay. Um. Haven't we seen this enough? Everybody and their grandmother does a spear now, and mm. I, th- I think we're done. I think we got it. I think we're done with it as a finisher, at least. Yeah. I mean... Unless it's a surprise, where it's when, like... When you can throw six DDTs in a match, yeah. and one spear handles the business, no, no, come on, man. We gotta, we gotta move past this. Well, I mean, all the, all those head drops, that was nothing. But that <laughs> one run into the guy's stomach, that's what stopped it. Yeah, it takes the wind out of you. You can explain anything away. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it takes the wind out of you with the hard hook on the inside cradle there. And, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah that'll, that'll, that'll get you a three count. Uh, I mean, you got to get out of the ring pretty quick because they're going to pop up. Uh, right. But, uh, of course not in this case. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I'm just I was that was something that angered me. Like the softest looking spear in the whole match is the one that ended it. Um, why, 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 why was this so high up the card? This should have been just you know where you put this just below Hardy versus Nakamura. That's, that's yeah. 
if you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna stack this thing, you gotta stack it right, man. You know nobody wants to see it. Is that nobody is? And as proof, uh, this is the point in the in the show where the crowd just rebelled, started yeah. rebelling, and which had which had an impact on the main event, mm-hmm. a serious one. And that's the thing is, and look, I've seen them do some amazing cards. I sure. know the writers are better than this. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to see brains in that caliber. I mean, it, and it's not that. A lot of people will say, oh, you know what, I think you paid money to see Roman Reigns get his ass kicked. No, no. I don't think they want to see him at all. I mean, Roman is arguably good enough that he could take the lead and he could do something. He is packaged all wrong for for my money. He yeah. just, he beat Taker for the love of God. It's, it, and we, we're still doing the same thing? It's... Why have we not lifted him up into a repackaged You're right. he's, uh, he's being, godlike status? But no, he's, he's just the wet guy. He's I mean, being, <laughs> he's being used wrong, and he, you know, like I'm saying, because there is a personality in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, and t- and it's ten times what Lashley has because Lashley is such a damp sponge, and a nothing showed that off <laughs> quite like the post show interview. Yeah. Where, when, speaking where, of damp sponge, when he lost his um, oh god, when he lost his headband, it, it the My sprinkler god. turned on. <laughs> it was that's the most disgusting thing that I have ever seen. Just and granted, and just water just flying and granted, everywhere. He can't control that. That's not his no. fault. But in the middle of this match, when you start watching that happen, at this point you're like, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the man leaks. Yeah, uh, the man's yeah. leaking like a sieve. Yeah. Sure, uh, that's how Roman Reigns keeps his head wet, right there. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> gross. Um, Isn't it? <laughs> that's I, gross. Um, we might want to start like using adhesive on that thing, yeah. keep it on him. <laughs> yeah, you know I can't. Uh, but yeah, like po- again, I'll just jump to the post show. Please, B team comes on. They're still they're still hyped from their win. They're going over. They're in also still in the wrestling gear because the show has just ended and they're they're still celebrating their win hours earlier. Lashley has taken the time to put on a suit and mm-hmm. sit down and you hear how I'm talking. It's basically the ferocity with which he talks about what happened tonight after enduring a major match, uh, and he sounds calm and well rested, and he's not talking about. You know how much, how hard this was for him, or what a struggle it was. It's <coughs> just and that's the it's, and you know that that's the thing. And I understand that that post show is supposed to be well. This is like your half shoot, half work, right. uh, Part of the segment, sure. But st- look, that's the way he is when he's kayfabe too. Yes. So this is. <sighs> There's no, there, there's no fire within. <laughs> it's, when I think about the amount of money that they spent on him to come back, <laughs> I just, I, I, Vince owes me money. That's, I mean, that's, look, I mean, <laughs> it's a, you can put me and James Ellsworth as a tag team and pay us both that much money between us. And, man, we're going <laughs> to... We're gonna do a lot better than that. I'll tell you that. Y'all will, <laughs> y'all will be like Santino level of over. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? It's <laughs> they will God. love you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't get me stuck. Put me over there with uh, with the B team. <laughs> By God, no, they ain't ready for that. <laughs> so uh, I can't do anything for this match. In fact, I, I gave it. Like, my... I, I, re- I, I, because I, I when we. When it was originally on, I came in late, so I just had missed this match. So I rewatched it later. Mm-hmm. I and on the WWE Network, really the only controls they have are play, pause, back up ten seconds, forward ten seconds. I gave the forward ten seconds button such a workout. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I have to watch this because we're going to talk about it. But you know what? A little time skip, time yeah. skip, time skip, time skip. 
keep going. Keep click, 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 click. Oh, God. Yeah. And it, yeah, the bad part about it, man, I want Bobby Lashley to do well. I want Roman Reigns to do well. I, I want, want somebody to do something in this match. I want him to do uh, well because I want to watch good stuff. Right. I, that's I, the thing. It's like, you don't go looking to be disappointed. No, no. Look, well, I'm I mean, positive I mean we're a very I, minor part of the internet fans in that regard. But Right. <laughs> I, I want to enjoy a Roman Reigns match. I want to enjoy a Bobby Lashley match. Yeah. I have not as of yet, uh, but uh, <laughs> there's not much we've been given reason to enjoy from no, them. No, it's and, I, and you know that that's what brings me to my uh, my rating, and it's the first time that I've ever done a negative. Uh, I was wondering. I was yeah, like, <laughs> it's a it's a negative Meltzer for me. Uh, <laughs> it would have been more entertaining if I if they had just come out and punched Jeff Hardy in the balls again. Yeah. <laughs> again, right down below Hardy versus Nakamura. That's where that should have gone. I understand that it has to happen because we're billing Lashley to take Roman <laughs> uh, to take uh, Lesnar's title. It has to happen because we've all sinned and we must be punished. <laughs> Now look at his this eyebrowless man. Look, look at what steroids will do to you. Watch him sweat. Watch him sweat. Be sad forever. Ah, <laughs> uh, let me put myself in a better mood here. Um, so we've got Alexa Bliss versus <laughs> Nia Jax. And I mentioned this. I mentioned this off mic, but it's like I. I Carmella and Alexa Bliss champions at the same time is interesting because they're kind of the, on the same, like different sides of the same coin. I, I, I said, it's like, because it's like Alexa is the mean girl, mm -hmm. the ultimate mean girl, and then Carmella is kind of like, what did I say? Oh, she's the villainous in a Disney Channel original movie. Yeah, she, there you go. It's just like, oh, they're just the evil brats, and it's. I would good. agree with you, but I would switch them. Really? Okay. Yeah. Possibly. I would. I would call Carmella the mean girl. Okay, you know I could buy that. Honestly, same again, different sides of the same <laughs> coin. That's what I'm saying. It's so interesting that they're both the champs right now, and they're both kind of running the same thing. Yeah. yeah kind of. This was a great match. It was. Uh, it was. I'm saying that's that's what's saying. Like it's interesting that they're both so similar, but it's working. It's working for both. Yeah. They're wor They're working it. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, Alexa, it was Alexa versus Nia Jax. Alexa versus Nia. You've got Ronda Rousey on the outside. Uh, uh, this suspended employee, uh, who should be at home <laughs> thinking about the terrible things she did, uh, is sitting at ringside. Uh, they gave her a Chiron of all... It's yeah. Like, it's like... Like they didn't, they didn't say like, no, no, this this employee did wrong. It's like, no, hey, look, Ronda Rousey's here for some reason. Yeah, yeah she works for you guys now. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, here's she's not, a, here's a she's not a special guest celebrity. She's employed. Yeah, <laughs> and on suspension. They 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 make her buy that ticket though. <laughs> they. <laughs> As I, you know, we're that's uh, the paradox of being a celebrity. Things you we know say. how this card is stacked. We're not gonna sell out. So I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need we're a few gonna, bucks. We're from gonna you. need uh, this. Do uh, you see where we put Lashley versus Reigns in this card? Are you kidding me? But yeah, so it's it's um, Nia Jax with uh, Natalia. Natalia. Yeah, yeah. yeah Na Na Nia Natalia Jax. comes out with Jax, and and, um, and Mickey James comes out with uh, Alexa Bliss. Yeah, looking uh, like a club mom. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fifty years old she looks. Boy, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, she's probably the hottest fifty-year-old that I've ever seen. But uh, my God. Um, when the, when you look, you say, "Oh no, she's thirty eight. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I I liked the match. I thought it was well done overall. I think uh, this it was and it, they did good with the extreme rules. They made liberal use of the weapons. They had some really funny spots. The like, one, yeah, go ahead and talk. The, about the it. one, the first one, which was they they like they knock Nia down and they they immediately run out to start getting weapons. Mickey starts pulling. They start, Alexa starts grabbing weapons out from under the ring and passing them to Mickey. Nia intercepts each one, tosses it in the ring. <laughs> Just yanks it out of her hand. And gone. this went on for a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> just, it was a, hey, Kendo, Alexa, stick, Kendo Alexa, stick. Alexa, despite the fact that I'm pretty sure she could see Naya doing it, <laughs> just like, here's another one. Hit it. <laughs> ah. 
It's is it working? <laughs> no. You know what? Stay the course. Keep passing me yeah. stuff. That's so. Despite some really great stuff, I I think I'll just go ahead and just say my big qualm was they were pulling punches hard. Um, yeah. They had these tremendous lineups, and then they would go, huh. and yeah. they would they they would stop themselves. And it's like I I understand. It's like this is probably their first real in depth. No, no, it's not. That's it's the really bad not. part because uh, Alexa's been in a hell of so much. Just something that. scared them about going full force with the weapons, and and you know we saw that a few weeks ago with Rhonda hitting um, uh, Alexa with the briefcase. Yeah, uh, pulling that punch bad, and uh, yeah, uh, that I want. I don't know who's in charge. I know at one point the the female trainer was Fit Finley. I don't think that's the case anymore. Yeah. Uh, the, but somebody needs to get on these girls and say, look, connect. you need to lay it in there. Yeah. Uh, You're just going to have to. It's like, that's, it, just, and at one point that led to... <laughs> Now, this was an unintentional one, but um, Mickey James rearing back to hit Nia with a, with a Singapore cane and... She, she hit Alexa in the head oh, yeah. on the backswing, and Alexa, being the and champ that she is, is selling it. And and and, and not, given here's the thing: Alexa got hit harder than Nia because she she comes down and gives the, the uh, just a light swing on Nia, <laughs> and gives Mickey the worst look. <laughs> <laughs> it just what the hell, woman? Honestly, the best weapons. Spot of the night was Naya throwing was it Alexa or, or or Mickey? One of them got thrown onto one of the aluminum trash cans and crushed it. Yeah, I believe I believe that was Alexa. Okay, yeah, yeah. that looked great because it because those cans always flatten out easy and it just mm -hmm. looks tremendous. And the Shades of Attitude era when they had like the aluminum cooking pans and they were selling those yes. like like crazy because they had the the cheap trash can lids and they were again super soft swings but still it was just, I was like that I I was a pass on because those always look terrible yeah but there's not like <laughs> I remember seeing those in the Attitude era mm -hmm. and they you could hear it reverberate but it just looked like nothing it was like. Pfft. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, I absolutely agree with you. If you're gonna do a hardcore match, I need you. To, I need you to get to get real about this. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I and that's gonna lead me into another point in the main event. There too. used to be back in the '90s a uh, uh, a thing about uh, if you would get hit with a chair. Yeah. Uh, back in the in the, say the mid '90s, maybe late '90s, even. Uh, if you got hit in the head with a chair and you put your hand up to block like every rational human being does. It's an instinct. It's an inborn yeah. instinct for people usually. But if you did that back then, you were considered a puss. Yeah. I, and and yeah, I'm like, going to need the ladies. Yeah, it's like you're a wrestler. I, I need you to, shot. I need you to. I don't. I don't need you to go back that strong, no. but I'm gonna need you to take a little hit off the attitude juice that we're drinking. Here. Right, right, right. Uh, you got, you got to commit. And yeah, it's just it. It's the only thing that took me out of the match because everything else looked great. Yeah. Uh, up until the point where that, uh, where that uh, that suspended employee ran into the ring and yeah. ruined everything. Yeah. No security. Uh, uh, where uh, was security? Yeah. This uh, lady's just st storming around the ring like she works there or something. Yeah. It's, it's, it's re yeah, Ron, okay, yeah, so Rhonda interfered on behalf of Nia Jax and, um, and then took down Mickey James. And, uh, again, I, I... And I don't know what happened to Natalia. I think she got taken out somehow, too. Uh, Natalia did get taken out. Yeah. I don't remember exactly Cause I can't how. Because but... I knew by the end of the match mm -hmm. she was a, kind of a non-factor. Yeah. Um... Uh, I personally, I you know, you're you're joking about the security thing, but I honestly think that would have done nothing but enhance the match. I, no, if I, they'd have I, grabbed I, three or four people, and you know, she gets to throw a couple of them off, but sooner or later. But I mean, know, that's the thing. Again, weirdness with the storytelling. She's suspended, right? She, like, yeah, she bought the ticket to be there, but if she's buying the ticket to be there, she's a fan for that night. Yeah, she shouldn't be jumping the barrier. Right now, in other times, they've done it. 
when wrestlers have gotten close enough to the people sitting, the people there suspended, it's like they'll take a swing, they'll have a, they'll have a back and forth, they'll mm-hmm. they'll fight a bit. They don't jump the barrier, right? And it's like because now now it's like that I would consider that a fan has jumped in. Get security should be on them now. Yeah, like and yeah, Ronda being Ronda should have you know fought them off. Yeah, you get a couple of them, but yeah. then you get overwhelmed, and you and get dragged taken out. to the back, and you get taken to dragged out stone, jail and uh, dragged out stone cold style, you know? Right. And she could be smiling cool. the whole time too. That would be great. Sure, absolutely. Because yeah, I, I I got you. Yeah, I got exactly. you. exactly. Because I love those times. It's like it's like because stone cold be walking out like the night in jail's worth it, fucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. There you go. Nah, that's okay. I'm getting fined. You say whatever you want. <laughs> it's gonna have an explicit warning anyway. <laughs> So we got Bliss versus Jax. Uh, good match. Uh, and further the story. I can't say anything bad about. It. I can't even say anything about uh, bad about Nia. Yeah. Which I've you know I've been guilty of uh, of uh, of being very critical of her uh, being dangerous in the ring. Yeah. Uh, I was saying that she's doing and things maybe that she's that, not maybe, ready for. And maybe that could have gotten back to her and them somewhat about. About them stressing the importance of being careful. You think she they, got my emails? No, no. <laughs> you, wait, you have her email? I've got everybody's email. Oh, Lord. <laughs> restraining, restraining orders inbound. It's, it's come up. It's come up. <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm betting that like, they could have gotten back to him. Like, be careful. And it's just mm-hmm. not the face or <laughs> right. stuff like that. And it's just like... Maybe they just they were like, okay, we need to be careful, and then they just kind of took that too much to heart. You may be right. You may be right. But uh, and then, again, I, that's a point about that. I'm going to bring up in the main event. But right. But you know, now match was good. It furthered the storyline yes. between all three of and, these ladies. And Bliss picked up the win over Nia, yeah. which is pretty pretty profoundly setting up Ronda versus uh, Bliss probably getting a SummerSlam. Possibly, maybe even a three way battle. Which could have been. I think could've. I would love to see that. Yeah. Um, I think Nia deserves another chance. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, mean, I would I'm, love to check that out. Yeah. That'd be great. Uh, uh, I gave this match uh, three and a quarter Meltzer. Uh, nice. I, I liked it. That's uh, the. It's one of the highest ones that we had on this card. Uh, so next up, you know, AJ Styles versus Rusev. Okay, I do have things to say about this match. And again, this goes back to storytelling was weird. Yeah, uh, very weird. Here, here's the breakdown. Because it, it's like we just decided. It was like, well, the, we don't really have anything for Styles to do. Here's, just give him Rusev. Yeah, here's here's my giant theory about what's about to happen because of this. Um, yeah, you're right. I think AJ style, uh, AJ's uh, style, AJ's style, <laughs> no, AJ's story here was he needs an opponent until SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. That was pretty much it. Um, he picked up the win over Rusev. Um, it wasn't a bad match. It wasn't. I no. don't think they. I don't think they pair well. At least with the, with the way they went about it. No. Um, but yeah, AJ picks up the win over Rusev. But what's interesting is how this unfolded. Because Rusev, again, ostensibly the heel. Now, the crowd's responding to him, and I think that's a reason the way things went down the way they did. Because yeah. it looked, for the most part, in the ring, it was Rusev's story. And Rusev's story is, he was re- like, un- he was wrestling to his best to legitimately beat AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. He was doing his best. It wasn't exactly working. Aiden English, who normally will interfere for him, was pretty much a non-factor. He was out on the ring. Mm-hmm. Doing nothing. This whole match was a tough, a, a tough encounter between t- the two, AJ and Rusev, doing just giving their all. That, that's a story they're telling, at least I think. And at the end, when Rusev is, Rusev was also battling through uh, a leg injury he he ended up getting earlier in right. the match, mm-hmm. which uh, contributed to him not being able to lock in the accolade properly. Right. So he's struggling to try and still win. Uh, Aiden English finally uh, makes makes a move on Rusev's behalf, but what's interesting is he doesn't single to Rusev what he's doing. He pops into the ring and undoes the ring, the top turnbuckle, Mm -hmm. exposing it without anyone knowing what he's doing. No one's. Poor camera work on this too, because yeah. I didn't even see it happen. Yeah, you, 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 you actually, funny enough, were commenting. When's Aiden gonna do something? Right yeah. around the time he was doing it, which was hilarious, because yeah, he pops in, he does that, and then he drops back out. And of course, 
Rusev not knowing what's going on, but I get he could have even he could have seen that the turnbuckle was exposed. But I don't even think he did. I think he was they were fighting towards that corner. Mm-hmm. AJ reverses something Rusev does. He hits the turnbuckle and he loses because of that. Right. And it looks to me for all. I could be wrong. They could go different ways with it. It looks like they're setting up that Rusev is turning face without English. That's uh, exactly where they're going. And uh, we did they saw do the, it? Yeah, we will. We're we're hinting at okay. it. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I, again, it. I'm basing this off of not having seen Raw. Uh, well, this is fall, SmackDown or SmackDown uh, following. Excuse yeah. me. Well, you gotta get it together, pal. Well, that's, whatever. <laughs> now that, casual that, plus, my friend. Smack, SmackDown. Uh, there is some discussion about uh, Aiden English wanting to, uh, you know, Sabotage I need to get or... back in Rusev's good graces because he's angry. And see, that's the thing. I think this is going to end with Aiden English trying to help, screwing up, and then getting punted off, punted away. You know. Yeah. Like... And the problem with this, I really like Aiden English, yeah. uh, and I think he's a dynamic wrestler too. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't. If this angle doesn't work, uh, other than going to 205 Live, I don't know what else creative can have for him. Right. Uh, so, uh, that's kind of just up in the air here. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's like, the, really it was mostly just a, a, to to give Rusev a jumping off point for a new direction and to give AJ a match to keep him along until SummerSlam. Right. Like like yeah. I said, not bad. No, but no, no. I don't think they gelled together too well. It, it and this and the the match was overall too slow. It, it was it was slow. It wasn't your typical AJ Styles match. Also, Rusev needs better colors on his tights. Um, <laughs> I like this match. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't bad. Like it was slow. I gave it two and a quarter Meltzers. All right. Uh so next up we have got uh Dolph Ziggler the main event okay versus Seth Burn It Down Rollins main event and 30 minute Iron Man match we got into a little discussion that night about whether or not fans are ready to accept an Iron Man match here's I the problem I think I think they could have not on that night though um no because after after like it's like I said after Lashley reigns the crowd was out of it yeah. and the crowd was super out of it for this match and it they demonstrated it like just a few minutes in when they suddenly decided to start counting down the end of every minute like it was the Royal Rumble yeah. but, uh, countdown they counted down from the 10 mark to the zero mm-hmm. and then made the buzzer noise they kept doing this yeah i and mean the whole time at one point they were trying to get countdown when the countdown wasn't even with them yes. uh so uh, they were they were just they i could tell they were upset and they were trying to sabotage it yeah it felt just, like that which, which sucked because it was a good match it was a they really good, good match it was uh they look those those boys can go man. Yes. Uh, those two are great Ziggler together. Ziggler and Rollins, man, they can they can bring the thunder and uh, and they did. Yeah. Uh, the problem is nobody cared, and I think again I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the uh, uh, of the writers and how they stack the card. Yeah. I think they might have thought was that well. If Rain, we have to put Reigns and Lashley uh, in the upper echelon of the card. Maybe Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax can get them back. And decent thought, uh, but you put that mismatch with Styles and Rusev together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that brings them back down. It, it just it was just poorly done. Uh, yeah, that match did slow things down to the point where it just like the the crowd was like. Like they, 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 you could tell they were kind of just done. Yeah, and, and I one. You know the thing about it. If I can interrupt you, sure. Short pay per view. It uh, was. Yeah. Usually, pay per view will go on to eleven thirty. I think uh, Hensley and a couple of our other friends they 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 bailed. They they bailed. bailed. Yeah. Uh, did not realize Fair enough. you're about to watch the very last match and. and <laughs> So, so one thing I thought they could, they should improve next time they do it, they should go back to just the announcers 
telling you when about how much time is left. Having yeah. that giant timer. Why did you give them something to look at? The you giant are, timer was a bad idea. You are well versed in the fact that that if you give certain crowds something like now if you took this out to somewhere in the Midwest yeah. and ran it out there, you're probably not going to get that kind of, uh, of reaction. Yep. But you take it to these hardcore fans, you take it to Pittsburgh, you Rowdy take it smarts. to New York. Yeah, yeah. You're going you're gonna to have some problems, man. And yeah. eh, I call this their fault. They should have known better. A little, uh, yeah. One thing that I, I discussed it when we were watching is like, wow, this is surprisingly a high-scoring Iron Man match. Now, I mean, they did, they did, yeah. they did build it up to a point, and, and they did, they, a lot of early points, and then finally they slowed it down, and then it, you know, of course, they had a tie, and they were, it was a race for time, mm -hmm. but like a lot of surprise, like points on the board early. Yeah, you know, you made the, uh, uh, you made the analogy uh, when we were watching it. Is like this is kind of what I would do when I'm playing my video game. Right. <laughs> is, right. As I like, I got a pin. Okay. Boom. Another super kick. Let's get another pin here. It's uh... <laughs> that's really kind of how it went. As like I thought the pacing of the match, at least for me, is a lot more satisfying when it is they're beating the hell out of each other, and then finally as time is winding down, they need to start. Like they're tired, they're hurt. Every mm -hmm. move counts at that point, and that's when the mistake happens. Yeah. And then you get the pin, and you get or you get the lock in the submission, and they have no choice, and they have to, and they take the points. And then it's like, mm -hmm. at this point, now you're trading points, and you're trying to one up. Yeah. And uh, but what they did was still good. They did it. They kind of did it in the reverse way I thought, but it was still good. It was very good. They did I, great. I I love Dolph's tights, by the way. Uh, I yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I I love the match. I gave it uh, three melters. Uh huh. Uh, so oh, I'll tell I'll tell you the end real quick. They 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 traded back and forth until finally they were tied at four each. Mm -hmm. And just as Seth goes to get his fifth oh, point, yeah. the buzzer runs out. Yeah. It's a tie. And Beautifully Dolph, done, by yes, the way. Dolph bails. Grabs his title and he's like, "Haha, I'm still champ." As he tie makes, goes to the defender. Yep. Yes. <laughs> as he goes, as he, as they like to remind people, uh, you know, just in case they forget, it's like you know, a draw or a count out or anything of that sort in a championship match, champion retains. Yep. So he's making his way up the the ring and then uh, the entrance and then Angle comes out. And he's like, "No, no, no!" And of course, it's like, "We're gonna have a winner tonight," especially since it's in his hometown, cheap pop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, and so he gets back in, Seth is raring to go. He is immediately distracted by Drew McIntyre, knocked silly, loses. Yeah. <laughs> so Ziggler wins legit and gets the hell out of town. Beautifully done. Yes. I wish the crowd had been into it. Yeah. Uh, but again, I uh, attribute all of that to stacking of the card. It, just looking at this, I've got it written down here on my paper, uh, just looking at it... Um, just mixing some things up here, and you've got yourself a damn fine card. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, and it, I'll even say, uh, Reigns and Lashley has potential to be good. Yes. Uh, you know, just not quite that far down, because we know what to expect with those cats. Right. Uh, overall, I gave this uh, whole pay-per-view two Meltzers. Uh, okay. It's a yeah. little bit disappointed. Below average is probably about right. Yeah. Not terrible, but below average. Yeah. I can't say. I can't like say I said, anything like, bad about it per se. Storytelling except the stacking. Is, the way the some of the matches were were not great. The storytelling was uneven and mm -hmm. weird. And it's like unless you 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 know you have a definite plan for where this is going. Yeah. On its own, it's like this is. I don't know what this is. It felt thrown together. A little, um, and I, and I'll be honest. Um, if this is the kind of thing they come up for with Extreme Rules next year, they should just stop calling it Extreme Rules. Because <laughs> as I pointed out during the Dolph match, in Dolph uh, Seth Rollins match in particular, mm -hmm. it's like Dolph got cracked in the face a little bit, and he had mm -hmm. a little bit of a blood bloody nose. It's like I realized that was the first time I'd seen blood all night in an Extreme yeah. Rules pay per view. It's like I know they're they've cut that back. They're trying to keep it out of sight as much as possible, but mm -hmm. this is the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. This is the nod, like you said, to ECW and the Attitude yeah. Era. And it's like, you had a weapons match that was bloodless. Yeah. You, it's like, and funny this that is you the one... bring that up, because the very next night on Raw, yeah. uh, 
Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns gets opened up. Yeah. And, uh, and like this, I is think the, hard way, but still, it's the one pay per view where you should be where it's not like you should you shouldn't maybe okay fine not gratuitous but you should let it go. Mm-hmm. Like these are pe- these are people who are fighting in, in ex- extreme rules for very for very important reasons to them. Mm-hmm. People are gonna get opened up. I think you right. know it's gonna. It's supposed to feel like it's a, like it's extreme, right? You know, it's like I'm not saying wrap barbed wire around the ropes that particular night. I'm saying it. <laughs> I I'm not I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> That's your call. If you want to slip a C4 board in there, sure. Um, but but it's like let them bleed a little. Yeah. Them, uh, show how important it is that they're willing to bleed for it. At least at least in the main. Yeah. At least spe- in the yeah. main. And it and it only happened in the main a little bit, and by accident. And it was yeah, it was a hard way. So yeah, it's like, I really wish Money in the Bank had been our star, but we'll never hear that one. Yeah, but maybe next month will be better. Right, um, Man, I'm hoping. Which is gonna bring me to my top ten rankings as far as this pay per view goes. Uh, I base my rankings. On how I think uh, we we how how good a character we have, sure. How good their athletic prowess, is, their in ring work, and their promo mm-hmm. use, along with uh, Vince's win loss record, uh, titles, and so on. Uh, Nerd. I know. I know. <laughs> I've been doing this garbage since I was a child. This has been my way of doing things ever since then. It hasn't changed. Super nerdy. So. Get bent. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, so coming in at number 10, uh, just making it into the top 10, we have Daniel Bryan. Uh, don't know quite how this happened, but actually I kind of do because this is these are Vince's boys. Eric Rowan makes comes in at number 9 over Daniel Bryan. Let you marks sink that one in. Oh, I mean, just uh, like the, the match, you <laughs> over Daniel Bryan. Right. Uh Coming in number eight, we got Charlotte Flair, baby. Uh, seven, our main eventer for the evening, Dolph Ziggler, mm-hmm. uh, which brings us to number six, our other main eventer, uh, Seth Rollins. Number five, we have the other Bludgeon brother, Luke Harper. Uh, <laughs> again, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not saying that my system is perfect. Oh, I realize it's flawed. It's <laughs> uh, give me a break. Coming in at number four, we have. Mella is money, Carmella. Shinsuke Nakamura comes in at number three. Like a the, swift kick, like a swift punch of the balls. <laughs> the monster among men, Braun Strowman, brings us to number two. And the WWE champion brings us to number one in AJ Styles. You notice somebody that has been left off of that top ten which should be there, yes. but is not. Russo, because it's his How day. How dare you? I'm referring to Brock. Take some time off, Lesnar. But what He's are you going to do? He's got a better list to appear on. Yeah, clearly. Um, I'm sorry, are you saying that Roman Reigns isn't on your list? Your top ten? I am saying Roman Reigns is actually number 12 on my list. And that's been... I had nothing to do with that. He just popped up there. That's <laughs> but don't worry, WWE has designated a special number one spot. <laughs> and I'm, I'm hoping to keep Roman Reigns off this list. If, if there is a just and loving God, he will not allow that kind of garbage to go down. I'm sure thoughts it like that. It took me a moment to realize that you just said two words, a just and loving God. Because I definitely thought you said a just and loving God. <laughs> but I think that's going to do it because we are running out of time for this uh, episode. We talked way too long about something that really didn't deserve it. All right. Yeah, I tend to agree. And next up, we are going to be discussing SummerSlam, one yeah! of the big four. It's one of my favorite pay-per-views of the year. I can't wait. It's almost um, time for Summerfest. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for Chris Barnes, this is David Two Dogs Hayes saying to you guys, if you got out of bed this morning, you had a job to go to and someone that cared about you when you got back home, folks, this match is over and you just won via pinfall. This has been 
This is a work. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a review on whatever platform you're listening on. If you've got thoughts you'd like to share with us or questions for Dogs and Chris, shoot me an email at david.longwalk at gmail.com. You can also get on Facebook and like Long Walk Productions and This Is A Work. And just for the fun of it, give a like and a follow to Free Rain Theatre Company. Free Rain is producing a show this fall at the Duke Energy Theatre in Charlotte called They Fight, a collection of scenes featuring the best battles and brawls in the works of Shakespeare, which Two Dogs and I will be a part of. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next month.